was the best moment you had at final? The best moment? I think when we first won the league in my first year here. Can you remember how many goals you scored? Uh, this time I was a striker, so I scored so many goals. I think over the 100. And then uh, at the age of, uh, before turning in 16, we were approached by a scout from Arsenal. I, played, I was playing on this pitch. After the game, he came to me and said, hey, I want to speak to your father. And once he started speaking English, I was thinking, yeah. There's injury problems in the past. Can you talk about how you kind of stuck together as a family, how you supported him through those difficult times? It's, it was very difficult for him, for us as a family as well, because you never know what will happen the next year. Can you explain what GBS is? Guillain-Barre syndrome is when your immune system attacks your nerves. Some people fully recover, but 5% of people die. SBV Excelsior was Kyle Ebersilio's first encounter with competitive football. At the time, the Rotterdam side were playing in the Dutch second tier, and Kyle joined the youth system at his hometown club at the age of seven. Yeah, it was my, my first training. I got the ball like from this side, took a touch. I started dribbling inside and outside, inside, and then top bins. <laughs> Vader, again, again. <laughs> Kyle didn't spend long at Excelsior. It took just six months for Feyenoord to swoop in for him. Despite his short stay, the head of Excelsior's youth academy, Marco van Lockham, remembers why such a big club came in so soon. At that moment you saw already that he had some special mm -hmm. things. Yeah. If you see Kyle, he, his dribbling was amazing already. He was, uh, I think in attacking and defending, he was there and there. And if you bring on in that age already and the attacking and defending together, then I think he's the player who's he now. And I think he's, uh, how do you say, the box to box player. This is your like almost training manual for Kyle as an eight-year-old. Ah, this is in Dutch, yeah? He needs to use as first his two legs with the ball and then um, a zigzag through the pylons and then come back. But that last one, but this 50 one, times. 50 times. Feet up in the air to the chest and then come back and then kill it. He must have been tired at the end of that. Well, if you want to be a pro, you have to <laughs> go to the, to the max. Kyle was making a name for himself and had started attracting attention from overseas. Feyenoord came with a contract after Arsenal came with a contract. So Arsenal was first. Okay. That's why I was thinking, uh, why is Arsenal first and why did Feyenoord come before? There had to be a secret. I uh, couldn't tell no one, but uh, in school I told everyone. <laughs> Kyle said, yes, I want to go. And that's when we as a family decided that, well, we're going to support you. We're going to stay behind you and we're going to uh, uh, help you to, yeah, to follow your dream. So that must have been a big step for you as well. Yeah, it was a huge step because everything changes. Um, I had a good steady job and uh, I had to tell my boss, listen, I have to go to, uh, to England with my son. My wife did the same thing for her as well. She was working at a, a big company for almost uh, 14 years. Was that a risk for you as a family as well, maybe? Yes, it was a risk. It was a gamble, of course. Everything is a gamble in life. I think on the pitch, yeah, physically I got stronger. For example, when I went back to, to Holland for the national team, uh, it was so easy for me because I was used to the, the English style. And also off the pitch, uh, it made me a man. One of the highlights of Kyle's young career was winning the under-17 European Championships in 2011. The Netherlands beat Germany in the final, and to top it off, Kyle was named as the tournament's Golden Ball winner, playing alongside Leon star Memphis Depay. The coach, Albert Seifenberg, did a really good job by uh, uh, putting them together because they've played with each other for a long time, and six or seven players came from the final youth setup. Kyle scoring the, the last goal was a very proud moment for, uh, for us as a whole family. And um, I can remember that I didn't, uh, we cheered in the stadium when he scored. And when they, they, they won the, 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 the final whistle, they won. And I went to the bathroom and I had a victory yell. Just me and, my, and, my, and myself. <laughs> That's when you realize what kind of struggle you've been through to get to this point. Kyle spent three years at Arsenal. Then, in 2013, he signed a five-year contract with Dutch side FC Twente. 
he hit the ground running in his first season, scoring against his boyhood club Feyenoord in only his second game. After loan spells with Nottingham Forest and Ardo Den Haag the following year, Kyle returned to Twente, but his playing time was halted after suffering from Guillain-Barre syndrome. During our summer break, I was training here in Rotterdam with a personal coach, and I think during that time I got the, the, the injury. And then I was back at Twente, but they didn't know what it was, so they just uh, let me play. And then after a month, I think, I said to them, look, I cannot play 100%, so we have to find out what it is. To find out more about GBS, we headed to Charing Cross Hospital to speak to a consultant neurologist. I'm Dr Jane Pritchard, I'm a neurology consultant here at Charing Cross Hospital and I'm also the chair of the medical advisory board for the GAIN charity, which is the charity that supports patients with Guillain-Barre. So firstly, can you explain what GBS is? Guillain-Barre syndrome is when your immune system attacks your nerves. The classic presentation is that people start to develop a bit of tingling, perhaps in the feet at first, and then gradually they become weak. And some people progress very, very rapidly. So some people within two days might be unable to walk. But with other people it's more gradual. It was very difficult for him, for us as a family as well, because you never know what will happen the next year, as a young boy, you don't have any spare time. You don't have any time to do with your, uh, to go out with your friends or do uh, nice things. You have to focus on how to be a pro, live as a pro, think as a pro. How does that? So, is it possible to recover from it fully? Yes, some people fully recover, but five percent of people die. So, it really is a question of getting through those initial stages when you're very severely affected, and then gradually improving and healing the nerves from whatever your worst point was. What's unusual about it is that it doesn't normally come back. It's extremely rare for it to come back, whereas lots of other immune conditions that people are affected by come back. In August 2016, Kyle was given the all clear, having recovered from GBS. May the best player win. Success. <laughs> He's now training with NEC, and looking to make up for lost time. At the moment I'm 100% fit. I've played um, maybe six games now, from January to now. I'm feeling, feeling good mentally, physically. I'm ready for, for my next step. While Cole did recover from GBS, his case serves as an example to other players who might be struggling to identify their symptoms. It's not that common, you know, incidents of one one or two per hundred thousand, which means your average GP will only see it once in their entire career. So the more that people know about it, the more they know what symptoms to look for. I think it's really important that people are aware these conditions exist. When you had those injury problems, how important were your family there? From the beginning, it was very important for me. Not only my dad, but also my, my mother, my sister, my little brother. <laughs> so lucky! I also appreciated that they came to England with me the time when I, when I was young. Yeah, you, sometimes you need people who you can talk to and get your, your mind away from your injury or from, from football. You said you made sacrifices when you were younger. Your friends were in McDonald's and you couldn't go to McDonald's. <laughs> so talk a bit about those sacrifices and McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. When I was young, I used to go to McDonald's uh, a lot after every game. Clinical finish. <laughs> At that age, when I left Holland, all my friends uh, were also like the same age, and then they started to go out to drink, get in touch with girls. Those things I missed, but I think it's good for me that I missed it. Because you never know if I stayed in Holland and I was allowed to go out to them or something, you never know how uh, my career would go. I still have dreams to play in the, in the Premier League. But there's something I have to do first, that's play games for like one or two seasons. Then I'll be ready for that step again. <laughs>